welcome back to my channel. So this marks part 4 of the pre-PA FAQ collaboration with Paul the PA student. I'm sure you get the gist now, but be sure to check out his version of this video because he has different answers and different questions on his page. So after you finish this video, be sure to check out his in the link in my description. But alright, let's get to what we're here for and let's start these pre-PA FAQs. So the first question is, did your volunteer hours include helping out in the community? And the answer is, yes, they did. So I have both medical and non-medical volunteer experiences that were out in my community. So this ranged from helping with like walks or runs, beach cleanups, Habitat for Humanity. And while I was abroad, I volunteered in a nursing home and then I also helped with an organization and we passed out food and shelter and clothing to homeless individuals of Leeds. So obviously patient care experience is very important and so is healthcare experience, but schools really do like to see that you have volunteer hours, both medical and non-medical. So what I really recommend is to pick a population that you're genuinely interested in. I chose individuals with disabilities and then the elderly community. And then I had both medical and non-medical volunteer experiences with that population. Volunteering isn't just a great way to show schools that you're a passionate, compassionate human being, but it's also a great opportunity for you to get experiences in populations that you may provide care for in the future. So the next question is, was kinesiology a great major choice for you? And overall my answer is yes. So I started out as a biology major and once I looked at the courses that I would have to take, I just wasn't as interested in them as much as when I looked at the kinesiology courses. So kinesiology at my school was pre-physical therapy, so it was geared towards people who wanted to go into grad school for patient care. Although PT and PA are extremely different in terms of what they actually do, they still both have the common goal of treating patients and providing quality health care. So at the end of the day, the information that I learned from my pre-PT classes are very applicable to the whole PA profession. So the major in my school was more hands-on since it was geared towards a more clinical role. We had more classes that revolved around building rapport with patients and learning how to be a good clinician and building skills with the communication and making sure your patients trust you. So I think that aspect of my major was extremely helpful. And I didn't really see that information in any of the, like, the science majors such as biology. By all means, that's not a diss to biology. That's just something I wanted in my education. I wanted to get that kind of experience before I started PA school. So I decided that since my school had a major that had that already included, I figured why not do that. My campus also had a physical therapy clinic on it, so it was for individuals who were low income, um, underserved populations with neuromuscular disabilities. So I was able to volunteer there, and then that was also one of our required courses. So even by my school offering that type of clinic as a class where you're required to take that was just such a telltale sign for me that kinesiology was the right path for me because it just had more clinical aspects to it. Absolutely. It was a life-changing experience for me i am so happy i changed my major to kinesiology i was a biology major at first i took one kinesiology class it changed my life i changed my major and um, i graduated with a kinesiology degree a lot of the classes we had to do a lot of physical activity so it motivated me to do better because i would try to do the physical activity and i would pretty much suck at it but it motivated me, and that's what I took from my studies uh, as a kinesiology major. Did it really help as a PA student? The anatomy did help a little bit, but as a bio major, you'll take anatomy, and it's part of the requirements. Um, but I feel like it kind of prepared me in a way, and I don't regret it. I would definitely, if I were to go back, I would definitely become a kinesiology major all over again. Um, and I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. It's not just for PA school, but for your personal growth. I think it's going to change a lot of perspective and it's going to change a lot of the mentality that you have as a person. That's just what I took from it. So next question is, what was the hardest or most stressful part of my journey to PA school? In all honesty, this may sound weird, but I think the hardest part was the sacrifice that it takes to be involved. I'm not saying I was involved in anything or that I did these spectacular things, but I did tend to spread myself too thin and I was running around a lot in undergrad when some of my friends had a little bit more free time and were able to like balance things out better. So I think the hardest part was feeling this pressure to do everything and to be involved in everything, to be competitive. And obviously it worked out because I got in my first try, but there are so many things or times where I didn't have the energy to do things with my friends or I needed to take a night, you know, in where my friends were out doing fun things together. So there definitely was a lot of sacrifice in my journey, and I do not regret any of it, but that was just really hard for me. Especially when you know that college is like the one time you're going to be with all these people of the same age as you, doing all these fun things. So it was really hard to find a balance between wanting to be that free, young 20-year-old doing fun things with my friends, or preparing for my future as a PA. 
And also, I'm naturally introverted. Um, this type of stuff is not normally what I'm good at. Speaking at universities is just something I never thought I would do. I didn't think I would be president of a pre-PA club. I just didn't think I had that in me. So I'm still naturally introverted no matter how much I've grown and how much I've been able to do now. So at the end of the day, after I volunteer and talk to people on campus and mentor people, it can be overwhelming sometimes. And I think that's something I've had to learn is to balance communicating with other people, helping other people throughout their journeys, and finding time for myself to be alone, to be in my thoughts, and to recollect and recharge. The pre-PA journey is not for the faint-hearted. It's not for people who don't want to work hard. So if that's something you don't want to do, then this may not be the path for you. But it definitely is manageable if you figure out how to time manage and how to prioritize things and get things done so that you do have that social time. It is also very stressful to find experiences. Shadowing is extremely hard to find. Patient care is extremely hard to find without a certification. It takes a lot of determination and kind of a thick shell because you do get no's often. So you just have to really persevere and just keep trying because one yes may lead to like 10 other experiences. So I think there was two, two parts that were kind of stressful and hard. The first one was after I applied and I was just waiting to hear back. That was definitely one of my hardest parts uh and the reason is i'm an anxious person when it comes to the unknowns i like to always be a step ahead i like to always be prepared so the fact that i was i didn't know if i'm getting an interview or i didn't know if i'm getting accepted that always gave me an anxiety um so that was one of the hardest parts and the way i dealt with it which i kind of talked about in one of the previous videos but exercise um i just you know i did the best i can do i submitted all my applications i uh, made sure everything is on fleek as they say and um i just went to the gym and started working out and just tried to take it off my mind the second part was when i was actually starting pa school so the first semester of pa school um you know, everybody's like, oh, it's like a fire hydrant that you're trying to drink out of and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it is. Um, a lot of people were stressed out during PA school. A lot of people had a lot of rough time during PA school. I had a rough time during PA school, but you learn to adapt and to um, use the situation for your benefit. So I think it all came down to time management and triaging things that you have to do. I kind of talked about that before, but um, there's going to be a lot of material and a lot of topics that you have to study. And you have to triage which topics are more important and which topics are uh, more essential. But also you, you have to triage which part of the material in that topic is more important and which part is more essential uh, that you need to take care of. It's going to be a learning curve. You're going to get, acquire that as you're studying. What I recommend you do before you start school, though, is develop good study habits. Uh, my study habits for undergrad were crap, but PA school taught me, like, no, I, it's a grad program. You need to study, and I had to study. So uh, develop good study habits. Start learning your uh, equipment. So if you're using an iPad, start, you know, playing with it, you know, just checking everything out, making sure that you're familiar with all the settings so that you're not learning your iPad at the same time you're trying to um, take the notes and stuff like that. So whatever you can figure out right now is figure it out now because once you start school, um, there's going to be a lot of figuring out to do and there's going to be a lot of stress, especially the first couple of months. So this last question is a pretty popular one and that is the difference between medical model and the nursing model. So as I'm sure you know, PAs are trained under the medical model, such as doctors, whereas nurse practitioners are trained under the nursing model. So the medical model focuses more on cause and effect. So they identify the cause of the problem, the issue that they're presenting with, and the effect that it has on the human body and how they can treat it. So it's more figuring out the problem, diagnosing the patient, and then figuring out what treatment will be best for that patient. So it's usually more science-based. So it's more of like finding the issues, diagnosing the patient, getting the treatment, you know, those types of things. Whereas a nursing model, they're taught to look at the patient as like a whole. Obviously, nurse practitioners bring in science. They have to diagnose patients and treat patients too. But the nursing model teaches students to look at more external factors such as psychosocial factors and other things that may influence like the symptoms of that person. However, as technology and medicine progresses, the medical model and the nursing model have kind of blended a little bit together a little bit more. So when I work with PAs, MPs, and doctors, I really don't see a difference in terms of how the medical model or nursing model has influenced their practicing. 
So although the MP that I work with was trained with that, I see the PA that I work with doing similar things. They ask about all external factors that may influence how the person's feeling or how their symptoms are progressing. So just because like a doctor and PA are taught under the medical model doesn't mean that they don't look at external factors too. I personally like the idea of training under the medical model. I know the external factors are extremely important, but I feel like I've gotten a good grasp on how to take in those external factors through my patient care experiences. Obviously, nurses know so much more and they know so many external factors and how they can influence certain diseases. I don't have any of that knowledge, so don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that. But my patient care experiences have allowed me to have that in the back of my mind, so that's something that I'm always thinking about, especially as a scribe when I hear people talking about things. In the back of my mind, I have ideas running through my head like, oh, maybe it could be this, maybe it could be that. And I have those external factors in my mind. So I think that although I won't be trained under the nursing model, I'll still have those ideas in my mind when I'm practicing as a PA. But alright, that summarizes part 4 of the pre-PA FAQ collab with Paul the PA student. Like I said earlier, be sure to check out his version of the video, it's linked below. If you are enjoying my videos, please don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon to be notified when I post. Also, you can always DM me with questions on my Instagram at whitecoatchasing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye!